Morning everybody! Uh, slightly ahead of schedule today in that um, I've actually got my camera out and it's a Monday like I didn't get a chance last time. Um, so I'm on with a different company this week and driving a different truck so I'll give you a tour of the um, DAF space cab, super space, whatever it's called I'll, I'll make sure I find out uh, later on. Um, so I'm on with a Curtis Sider trailer, five drops around Yorkshire, um, one in Huddersfield. Slight delay there this morning due to some uh, paperwork issue, but we sorted that one out. And then a couple in Harrogate, well, uh, <coughs> Harrogate postcodes, one of them was actually up in uh, up near Pateley Bridge, so it was uh, 12 mile outside Harrogate. So that cost a fair bit of time. Uh, just had a um, working time and uh, taco break combined so as ah, one of them covid testing sites there look blooming egg fairly busy and all uh yeah so um working time and taco all taken care of uh just on the outskirts of york with two drops in york uh, both of which well one's one side of york one's the other so um it is what it is and then ring the office and find out what i'm doing Flooding around York. After 400 yards, leave the roundabout at the second exit and continue to follow the A1237. That's the next one off then in uh, York, just the last one to do now. Um, been using the sat nav that's built into turn the truck. Left, then take the next and in right fairness, turn. It's, it's been really, really good, very accurate. Um, Straight to the drop point. Menzies there, eh? used to do a lot into Menzies at York. So yeah, it's been uh, it's been really good. Like I say, straight to the drop points, right on the on the nail, not um, not even sort of anywhere near. So yeah, re really pleased with it. Please turn next left. Uh, I'll have a look in a minute. Good place to park, right opposite the junction. Still, there we are. Fantastic camera over in the corner there that uh, looks down your side when you indicate left. Best one I've ever seen. Uh, 3.6 miles says I should be there in less than a quarter of an hour, so that's Turn good. Left after 150 yards. So we'll go Typical, isn't it? As, um, as I'm singing the praises of the sat nav, it goes and has an absolute brain fart on me and uh, says turn left when it actually meant to turn right, so it took me down to a roundabout. Um, and brought me right back round to myself, but saying that I'm uh, I'm back on track anyway. But it's uh, it's it's tight in the, we're pretty close to the centre of York. You can you can see rising over the top of the building there is the is the actual city walls. Uh, you'll see them back up against. In fact, I'll show you back up by that uh, Keystone's pub or whatever it was over there. You'll see as I go left that um, you'll see the uh, walls uh, in a, in the form of a gateway, I, I think, or an arch at the back of me. So we'll have a look when we go around this corner anyway. Yeah, there you go. We're not so far from the uh, from the last drop point, drop, the drop point now. Can't say that, why can't I say that? Leave the roundabout at the fourth exit. I'm running alongside the river now. Turn left after 300 yards and continue to follow the A1036. Just need to keep my eye out because obviously in fairness to the postcodes they'll get you to the street but often it's the office address which could be the front of the building rather than the back of the building where goods in are is. So you just need to keep an eye out for stuff like that. Right, that's all the drops off. Last one off in York, um, incredibly tight yard. And uh, the guy said, yeah, just pull up there and spin round. And I, I, I pulled forward without having a look first. I probably should have, um, but my God, was it tight. Yeah, incredibly tight, but we uh, we made it. And uh, tipped, uh, paperwork signed, rang the office and I'm picking up a load for Cumbernauld, Scotland. Uh, for 
big delivery midday tomorrow. So that's mine to go with. So I'll get that loaded this afternoon. Uh, should be there in about um, half an hour, I would think. Yeah, maybe half, half an hour, maybe just under. Uh, get that loaded, find out what it is, strap it up, and then work out where I'm going to head to. Um, closest to the A1, so I'll probably go up the A1, subject to safe parking tonight. Um, and cut across to Cumbernauld further up north tomorrow. Get myself parked up tonight, work out what's best. Probably, if I can get parked up for 8 o'clock, that's a 13 hour day, which means I can have 11 hours rest. Um, uh, still meaning I can kick off at 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, should get me there for about 9 o'clock, which, which would be brilliant. Anyway, on to uh, Normanton pick this load up and uh, work out some times. I've stopped at this truck stop in Carlisle for many years so not quite sure of the way out but having looked quickly last night I think it's down this way and then off to the right. But it's emptied since last night though, but it seems to have started early. I'm a hoping I can uh, pull up just over here by the shop. Milk. Right, milk successfully purchased. Uh, just gonna find my way out. Should be a couple of minutes back onto the motorway here. But um, I can't, I can't work out why you had to um, log in with your Snap account and all the rest of it last night. Uh, and then there's nowhere to put your ticket this morning to see that you've actually left. But Leave the roundabout at the first anyway, exit. Here we are. So that's a good thing that um, you're straight out of there and onto the motorway. A uh, couple of hours up to the drop point in Glasgow. I'll catch up with you when it lightens up a bit. Here we go then, uh, tipped in Glasgow nice and early, uh, got there at 9 o'clock and pulled out um, quarter past 10, something like that, not booked in well 12. So yeah, gained a couple of hours there and uh, been given the next job which is over near Falkirk where I'm heading to now, just um, had a quick bite to eat. See the mountains over there all covered in snow, or the hills rather, all covered in snow. Coming straight into them now. Um, I'll give you a tour of the cab later on, but um, suffice to say, this is not one of the most comfortable daft seats I've ever had, and normally they're pretty, well, they're very good, um, but this one, uh, I, it, it doesn't seem to uh, take the pressure of bumps as much it seems it seems quite stiff so uh, maybe I've got a setting wrong but I don't think I have and uh, the worst thing is the night heater or the heater full stop 
the, um, the heater either blows boiling hot or cold. So I'm currently having to blast it on for 15 minutes and then turn it off for half an hour and then turn it on for 15 minutes and off for half an hour. Uh, just to try and keep warm, I've got it off at the moment, so it's, um, it's blowing right cold. And, uh, and then at night, it's just mental. It was set last night on 26 degrees and it was still blowing cold and the whole dashboard centre was croaking like a load of frogs. I don't know what you call a load of frogs. I don't know what you call a load of frogs. Uh, stick the answer in the comments below if you know what's a, what's a group or a load of frogs called. Anyway, uh, yeah, it was it was so so loud and noisy. Um, it was actually stopping you from uh, stopping you from going to sleep, and I and I, I couldn't work out what it was, but uh, eventually, yeah, worked out it was something to do with the night eater. And my God, was it noisy! But as I say, even set on twenty six degrees, um, it it was blowing cold. It, it wasn't uh, taking the chill off, so. And, and I mean, you couldn't set it to 28 or full or whatever because then you'd end up just waking up in a sweat all the time. So, uh, just had to do my best with it, really. Anyway, uh, the guys say it may be a trailer change at this um, next place. So, uh, I'll see you when we get there. And as luck would have it, uh, sister motor to mine came round a roundabout. So, uh, he's just in front of me, which may looks like he knows where he's going unless he's following Saturn out as well um, so yeah he's uh, he's LWE I think mine's LWF so yeah immediate sister vehicles there we go so you stick the, stick the left hand indicator on and that camera comes on over in the corner and the vision at night is incredible uh, it's, it's almost as clear as it is today I bet where all that steam is is, uh, is where I'm going uh, I think it's a timber wood place. Uh, but yeah, that, uh, that left-hand turn camera, I think it's for um, London, um, one of the new zone things that the, uh, that, that the uh, uh, Transport for London introduced to make it safer, along with um, the beepers that's fitted on the near side, so if anything is near, it. Uh, it's like a reversing beep, you know, it beeps. Oh, that's an idea. This uh, this fella might have a fuel card with him as well, which means that I can top up if we're both running south together, uh, just to make sure that I've got enough fuel. Because they didn't have a spare fuel card in the office yesterday. So after a long delay, uh, not being allowed on site because I haven't got a uh, hard hat and glasses I followed uh, as you saw I followed one of our guys in so once he'd um, got himself sorted he's kindly given me his hat and glasses so the chaps let me come up I've dropped me empty off uh, pick this one up and it's got a puncture so we're back to square one so I'm just waiting for a call back from the office which is here now to tell me what to do here we are approaching the uh, Falkirk the Kelpies in Falkirk uh, which are the two big um, metal horses head things. Uh, Falkirk wheel is just over that way somewhere. I've, uh, I've been there once, but I'll I'll put a link to a video about the uh, Kelpies that I took uh, up in the top now. But they um, they light up at night and they're Please absolutely the spectacular. Take the next Massive ride. things. Big, uh, big tourist attraction. Anyway, we're um, heading towards uh, Edinburgh. We're loaded, uh, or my, my other trailer was loaded. So I've just strapped that up and um, got a break in. And heading to uh, Edinburgh to pick up the A1. Um, um, I've got uh, just short of four hours left, so I'll do that. That'll get me to about seven o'clock tonight is just right uh, and I'll call that it for the day 11 hours off will give me 6 o'clock in the morning 
which should see me about two hours short of my destination south of the Humber. Uh, get there for eight o'clock, job done. Still southbound on the uh, A1, just north of Berwick upon Tweed, and I thought uh, I'd just show you the point where we cross from Scotland back into England, which is coming up in a moment. Not much movement up in the flags today. Apart from the Scottish ones, they're going. And there you can see, Scottish border. Right, we'll just do a quick <coughs> cab tour of this XF Super Space Cab uh, 105. Lovely machine. Really uh, plenty of room. I'll, I'll just stand up. So you can see, this is head height. And you've got that above that. That's uh, a net that's uh, electronically operated and it will change to a blind if you want to shut the light out uh, and then at the back of that I think you can twist those uh, and undo that all together so it's so it's open to the elements uh, behind it is a glass sunroof that raises and lowers uh, they are worked off the um, off the buttons here or by the taco uh, big overhead storage lockers uh, they're all locked because the guy that um, whose truck it is uh, has obviously locked them and taken his keys bit of a shelf here couple of um, cigarette lighter sockets 12 volt that side 24 volt that side there's also a 24 volt it's a different type of plug uh, I can't remember what they call them but um, they're good for like kettles and stuff they're, I think they're a bit sort of higher power or whatever uh, and a 12 volt one there that I run um, telephone uh, charging off um, USB port aux port uh, another USB port um, <coughs> so you can run sat navs and stuff like that but on this one uh, as you'll know from the video I've been running the sat nav that's that's built in uh, Steering wheel multifunction again, exhaust brake uh, on the uh, on the arm here. Uh, one of the one of the things um, in this newer version of the cab is you can see the plus and lower there. So um, I'm currently on this light which is the main ones but you rotate that uh, and it goes to those and I th ah there you go you can dim or brighten them as you choose uh, there's also then the night light for if you're driving you can see it's red up there red up there uh, red down in the foot wells um, but for the purposes of this exercise, I'll keep that on. Um, you've then got other reading lamps that uh, shine down on the driver. So if you're doing your paperwork and you sat in your seat, but um, if you're on a really bright cab, you can put them on. I'll just knock them off for the minute. Uh, central lock in. There's a bit of a slide out table there. Uh, handy for just having a snack on if you sat on the bed. Cup, of, cup, stroke, bottle, can holders there. Uh, the screen is behind the curtain now that uh, I've shown you before, and behind that is the beepers for the um, close proximity sensors built into the front near side for cyclists and the like. Uh, I've got a cool box with it. I don't have it plugged in. It's uh, it's just for carrying food from my house to uh, to the truck because two reasons. One is uh, the company I'm working for 
don't like auxiliary stuff plugged into the electrics um, I dare say they're okay with the phone on charge but um, mainly there's there's a built-in fridge much like the uh, Mercedes but I've got nothing that needs chilling or freezing or anything uh, I've just got some bread and stuff in there and then uh, another one uh, same that side which is just a dry box um, lovely thick comfort mattress with my scruffy old quilt on top uh, nice long bed nice and wide um, I have my as you can see my bits of stuff just chucked at the bottom end because um, it's still long enough for me <laughs> there's the glasses and hat that uh, cost me a, an hour and quarter whatever it was today uh, and my soaking wet coats down there drying uh, on the night eater that's probably and I'll just have a check oh it's blowing lukewarm and it's set to 27 degrees 27 degrees <laughs> it should be blowing hot as Hades uh, second bunk up top basically what you do is uh, pull the pull the handle that unhooks from here uh, allowing the handle to go up and the bed to come down so it rests on these you've got a set of steps that drop down that folds forward so the second man or second person can climb in there but most people as this chap just use them for storage um, a couple of storage bins there and here first aid kits fitted by the company that I'm working for um, the very good uh, health and safety uh, wise uh, nice speaker system good sound system in it um, oh yeah the the controls are pretty much duplicated at the back of the cab so your parking heater or night heater as it's commonly known uh, it's switch so it's on or off temperature up and down central locking for the cab um, glass sunroof open and close blinds open and close and turn the lights off so when you go to bed you just hit that and it uh, eventually turns them all off air suspended seat one armrest the other one they rely on you using the door um, as I said I don't know what's up with that seat but it, it it's not as comfy as ones that I've had before it is air suspended which means that you push a little button round there and it comes up now the idea is it sets to your weight and should actually do that depending on your weight as you can see it's, it's taking my weight but um, I, I, I'm actually standing on it there and it is lifting me back up but when I've been sat in it driving uh, it's nowhere near as comfortable as dafts that I've had before uh, anyway on a night you push that button which lets the air out and it just drops down I've been messing with the keys look to show you all that and um, what's happened is I turned the parking heater off there we go parking heaters on now 27 degrees one blower and she's blowing lukewarm the good thing is with these the directional controls for the uh, heating system the the like your car for example so blowing up blowing at you blowing down are the same ones for the night eater so if you have it blowing down and uh, say onto your windscreen or blowing up um, it'll actually defrost the windscreen so rather than having to load more tubing and piping uh, uh, around the truck it, it's using the actual um, heating piping which is which is a good idea I think but yeah they're a lovely cab I do like these 
um, the the bad things on this one are the uh, the seat and the night eater. 